Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome um, to the study of A Course in Miracles. My name is Eloisa Ramos mm -hmm. and I'm here with my friend Connie. Hi, Connie. Hello. And we left off on chapter 15. We are in the middle of chapter 15, the holy instant. We did uh, paragraphs, we read one through five. Um, and we're starting on paragraph six and it's section nine, Christmas. So it's the last section in chapter 15, Christmas as the end of sacrifice. Okay. Actually, is that section 11? Oh, sorry, I misread the numbers. Okay. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah. 11. <laughs> I, okay. I uh, reversed it. I reversed the little symbols there. Okay, so I think what we'll do is just review a little bit and we'll read the first sentence of each one. Um, and then just pick up where we left off. But I think we'll reread paragraph five because um, we wanted to go through that one more time anyway. So let's do that. Let me see. Just need to scoot this over a little bit. Okay, uh, paragraph one, line one. Fear not to recognize the whole idea of sacrifice as solely of your making. Okay, and let me read two also. And seek not safety by attempting to protect yourself from where it is not. Paragraph two. The sign of Christmas is a star, a light in darkness. See it not outside yourself, but shining in the heaven within, and accept it as the sign the time of Christ has come. Paragraph three. This Christmas, give the Holy Spirit everything that would hurt you. Let yourself be healed completely, that you may join with him in healing. And let us celebrate our release together by releasing everyone with us. Okay, paragraph four. You who believe that sacrifice is love must learn that sacrifice is separation from love. For sacrifice brings guilt as surely as love brings peace. And five, as long as you perceive the body as your reality, so long will you perceive yourself as lonely and deprived. And so long will you also perceive yourself as a victim of sacrifice, justified in sacrificing others. For who could thrust heaven and its creator aside without a sense of sacrifice and loss. And who could suffer sacrifice and loss without attempting to restore himself? Yet how could you accomplish this yourself when the basis of your attempts is the belief in the reality of the deprivation? Deprivation breeds attack, being the belief that attack is justified. And as long as you would retain the deprivation, attack becomes salvation and sacrifice becomes love. Okay, so um, it does a really good job of summarizing sort of the dynamics that um, that that go on in a lot of um, our behavior um, and um, let's see, the paragraph five really summarizes it really well um, because because it's about it's about, you know, it's about identity. It's about what we believe we are and and once we believe what what we have <laughs> somehow decided that we are, however we came to it, 
that's going to really determine uh, pretty much our experience in the world um, because it's going to determine what we see in the world because it's going to be a projection or an extension. Um, so it's going to be fear or it's going to be love. And um, an identification with the body is definitely going to put us in fear um, because because there is such a, um, well, the way it describes it here is that, you know, how could you thrust heaven and its creator aside without a sense of sacrifice and loss? Because it's a, basically a loss of everything um, in the sense that what we are is wholeness, um, you know, an extension of God that is everything that is eternal love infinite you know complete um no lack um just love no fear so so it's making a really good point here that you know once we um let's see and who could suffer sacrifice so once we find ourselves suffering and in pain um yeah, we've made ourselves a victim of sacrifice, okay? And then once we're in that place, there is this sense of feeling like, you know, we're justified in uh, an attack, in defending or in getting, or, you know, revenge or retaliation or um, somehow making, we think that that's how we make ourselves whole, you know? Um, because we feel so little or we feel like some someone took something from us or someone, you know, gave us a hit. So we need to hit back, that kind of thing. Um, that's why in six. Yeah, Connie. So just quickly, that word sacrifice, I, I, I'm a little confused. I know we've talked about it before, but how does that tie into once we are in that mode of pain and suffering? Yes. What is the sacrifice there? What? Well, the sacrifice is the awareness. Once we perceive ourselves as a victim, okay, mm. of sacrifice. So in other words, if we believe someone did something to us, we're going to believe that, oh, they took advantage of me. Okay. So right. I have a loss. So once we put ourselves in a place where we can, where we believe we can be attacked and that we can lose someone can take things from us, you know, whether it's, um, you know, a tornado that hit my house or whether it's someone that broke in and stole my jewelry or whether, you know, or whether it's, um, you know, um, just, I don't know, it could be a child that, that got my, my kitchen all dirty or whatever. <laughs> there's, mm. there's an, there's a judgment or an experience of loss. Oh, I invested in something and now I don't have it, you know. So once we're in that place of loss, then there's the sense of deprivation and sacrifice. Like, oh, well, I sacrificed myself for this and look what you did. You know, I, I took all morning to clean the kitchen and now you come in here and look, it's dirty again. I mean, it's as simple as that, right? Um, or, you know, it can be a, a whole, a whole um, because there's no degree of you know there's no degree of um illusion in the world of time so it could be you know there's an earthquake in california and and you know i have a house one minute and two minutes later it's not there so it's 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 the same thing and it's, it's the same thing with the body you know i yeah. i have i have a um i have a father and a mother and um you know um however many years later, I don't, you know, the body's gone. So it's the same thing. Um, you know, you see yourself as lonely and deprived. Mm, it's kind of, I was wondering too, like seeing the body aging and like going, oh, and then just feeling a sense of loss there. Of course, yeah. of course. Identifying with that, the body, the self-identity and 
Yes. Yeah. And, and it's physical strength and what it's, um, yeah. it's abilities, you know, and you mm -hmm. start losing the cognitive abilities and the physical mm -hmm. strength and all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so the sacrifice is, uh, so it's that word. It just, um, well, you, it's the feeling like a, a victim, like, oh, I've lost my identity, <laughs> which isn't true, <laughs> right? Yes, what, whatever it is that we, um, we bought into or we invested in, it's, it's a loss yeah. because it's temporal. Everything in the mm -hmm. world is temporary. <laughs> it lasts only for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and that's what perceiving ourselves as a body is. It's identification with the, uh, physical, um, world and the body is part of the physical world. And so, so there's a lot of suffering with that, you know, because things come and go, um, and, you know, you're healthy one day and the next day you're not and oh I lost my health you know so there's always that sense of uncertainty and fear and doubt and you know we're always trying to protect ourselves from that we're you know um, vigilant we're trying to eat healthy and exercise and keep the body fit and we're trying to do all these things and that's kind of what it's addressing here where it says um, to restore himself line four and who could suffer sacrifice and loss without attempting to restore himself? You see, so we give so much focus on the body precisely because it does age. It, you know, it declines and we have to give it a lot of focus and attention, special diet, you know, the whole thing. Um, and, and, but the point it's making is, you know, but how could you accomplish this yourself? How could you restore yourself, okay, when the basis of your attempts is the belief in the reality of deprivation? You see that? There's a contradiction there because if we have the belief that the body is aging and it's slowly basically dying, okay, uh, then how are we in a position to change that if that's what we believe you see we can't do it we can try but if we don't let go of that belief then we're just kind of working against our own belief we're trying to overcome our own belief yeah yeah but you know the real the the really tough one here is is line six. It's deprivation breeds attack, being the belief that attack is justified. Okay, so this is where we get into the whole history of the world of, uh, you know, a tit for tat, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, you know, uh, conflict, war, um, battles because. Because deprivation breeds attack, we we um, we feel and we believe that because we are lacking something, then someone must have taken it from us. And you know, you can go back to to history of a lot of different countries to see how people are still holding on to, you know, territory conflicts. We have that going on in the Middle East. Right. So it's um, it can be and it can be at any level. It can be at a personal level or it could be, you know, at a family level, family feud, or it can be at a you know national level. It could be at a party level. I mean, it, it's it's just a vision. Um, that's that's what it is. It breeds division and attack. Um, and then it gets flipped around. So line seven, as long as you re would retain the deprivation, attack becomes salvation. Okay. So that's survival now. You know, um, there's not enough for everyone. 
the scarcity principle. So it's an, you know, it's a survival um, of the fittest kind of competition. And that's salvation. And sacrifice becomes love. Um, because now the idea is there's not enough for everyone. Okay, so, um, you know, it means that if there's not enough food for my whole family, someone's going to have to sacrifice. So I'm going to sacrifice and I'm going to call that love. So then I'm giving up, quote unquote, my life, right, for somebody else. So that's how we could become connected with sacrifice as love. Now, now remember what it said above, though. You, what you have to remember is that um, in paragraph four, okay, it's line two. Oh, let's see. For you who believe that sacrifice is love must learn that sacrifice is separation from love. For sacrifice brings guilt as surely as love brings peace. Okay, because there's resentment in there. So, you know, even as a parent, <laughs> you get really tired, you know, and 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 when um, you know you've had a long day and your kids are asking for stuff, you know, there's a sense of guilt there because I did I can't give them everything they want or they they need or they're asking for because there's limitation. You know, there's always limitation. And that's what sacrifice um, is based on. It's based on the idea of limitation on scarcity because it's an, it's an identification with a body that is limited. A body only has, you know, 24 hours a day and it has limited attention and it has limited energy. So I can only give so much, quote unquote, of myself, you see, and then I get tired and exhausted and then I get really angry and upset <laughs> because then I, I turn it around. I say, well, you know, I'm just being taken advantage of here. So you just, it's a hole. It's like a whole black hole that we dig ourselves into, you know. Um, and it's all because we perceive the body as our reality. Okay. All right. So let's go to number six, Connie. Go ahead and read number six. <clears throat> okay. So is it that in all your seeking for love, you seek for sacrifice and find it, yet you find not love? It is impossible to deny what love is and still recognize it. The meaning of love lies in what you have cast outside yourself, and it has no meaning apart from you. It is what you prefer to keep that has no meaning, while all that you would keep away holds all the meaning of the universe and holds the universe together in its meaning. Unless the universe were joined in you, it would be apart from God, and to be without him is to be without meaning. Um, yes, so, so once we confuse sacrifice with love, uh, we seek for love, but what we're really seeking for is sacrifice, okay? Um, okay. And so um, we find not love because love is not sacrifice. Um, so, 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 so to deny what love is, is to not recognize it. Okay. And sacrifice is a denial of what love is because love is not scarcity. Love is not limitation. Love is not the body, okay? So we're not the body, okay? We can't, to, to love ourselves as a body or to love someone else as a body is not love, but we have confused it 
with love. So that's why it's called a holy relationship because to confuse the body um, with love is really the special uh, relationship because it's based on limitation and scarcity. Okay. And, you know, some are excluded and, you know, the special ones are included. But our love is not for everyone. <laughs> that's what, that's why we make it special. Um, and once we do that, we make love meaningless because we've given it a different meaning than the love of God that is unconditional and for everyone without exclusion. That's, that's what line four is saying is the meaning of love lies in what you have cast outside yourself and it has no meaning apart from you because once we, uh, we cast our brother outside ourselves and not love one brother, then we cannot uh, be whole. We cannot be, um, the, the meaning of the universe as wholeness is lost to us because we have cast one part out. And that's the belief in separation. That's the belief in the ego. That's the whole story of, you know, a tiny mad idea that's separated from God. Um, so, it, and so the, the, the true, the true reality of wholeness of Christ identity as one self, one son of God is the knowledge that is within us as the light within, which is the Christmas light, the light within. Um, so that's, Number six, unless the universe were joined in you, it would be apart from God. And to be with him and to be without him is to be without meaning. So, so the world, the universe becomes meaningless to us because we split it up into parts. Um, be, be, again is because we're identified with body and see things as bodies as physical objects and so everything is separate it's a perception of separation and we can't recognize the oneness of creation as god created it one son of god one creation uh, one self in in spirit in eternal spirit mind spirit it's basically i mean the same um because there's no parts, there's no pieces, no separation. Do you have a question, Connie? No. Okay. All right. So number seven. In the holy instant, the condition of love is met. For minds are joined without the body's interference. And where there is communication, there is peace. The Prince of Peace was born to reestablish the condition of love by teaching that communication remains unbroken, even if the body is destroyed, provided that you see not the body as the necessary means of communication. And if you understand this lesson, you will realize that to sacrifice the body is to sacrifice nothing. And communication which must be of the mind, cannot be sacrificed. Where then is sacrifice? The lesson I was born to teach and still would teach to all my brothers is that sacrifice is nowhere and love is everywhere. For communication embraces everything and in the peace it reestablishes Love comes of itself. Oh, and in the peace it reestablishes, love comes of itself. Yes, yeah, so the the Course in Miracles really emphasizes, you know, the the inner peace. Um, and that's the whole function of forgiveness. It's to restore inner peace. And and that's also what health is. It's the same thing. 
Um, and here it's saying that, um, that once we can reestablish peace, then love comes of itself. There's nothing that we need to do. Um, so the meaning of love is beyond what the Course can teach, but it takes us to the place where the conditions are met for love to come of itself, and that's inner peace. And 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 that that is you know, recognizing that we are one mind, one Christ mind, um, where the communication is of, of, of love. <laughs> um, because love does not exclude. So we, um, we, we open the, um, we can receive that communication when we let go of identifying with the body and recognize that we are one mind um, as Christ, Christ mind. And so this is uh, line five is, is really, you know, Jesus talking, Jesus. The lesson I was born to teach and still would teach to all my brothers. Yeah, is it sacrifice is nowhere and love is everywhere. Okay. Okay, number eight, Connie. <clears throat> Let no despair darken the joy of Christmas, for the time of Christ is meaningless, apart from joy. Let us join in celebrating peace by demanding no sacrifice of anyone, for so you offer me the love I offer you. What can be more joyous than to perceive we are deprived of nothing? Such is the message of the time of Christ, which I give you that you may give it and return it to the Father who gave it to me. For in the time of Christ, communication is restored, and he joins us in the celebration of his son's creation. Yeah, so 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 line three, what can be more joyous than to perceive we are deprived of nothing? Okay. Um so the recognition of let's see. Of not needing anything, uh the recognition of just being in the present moment <laughs> and um Let's see. And being happy and um and at peace is um uh, is joy. Okay, because there is nothing that that disturbs the um there's nothing that um interferes with the awareness of wholeness because there's no um Let's see. Because there's no sense of being a bounded body self. And so there's no sense of being separate uh, or different or um, unequal or, um, let's see. Because there's no comparison. There's no evaluation. There's no judgment in the mind. The mind, the mind has left all of that um, um, that would break break things into parts and pieces that are different. <laughs> so there's no perception of separation. Um, so that's a true perception. That's the um, the right mind, the um, holy mind. And um, let's see. And, and and it's freedom from um from from lack it's freedom from sacrifice from you know it, so it's freedom from suffering okay because there's no sense of deprivations there's no sense sense of lack there's no sense of need you know so there's no fear um 
And so, yeah. So what can be more joyous than to perceive we are deprived of nothing? Um, and that is the message of the time of Christ, which I give you. That you may give it and return it to the Father who gave it to me. So it's a sharing of the truth, which is what communication is at the level of the mind. Okay, because my perception of you is communication. Most of the time we think of communication in terms of words and talking, but it the communication is really at the level underneath that, which is um which is the um Uh, which is the non-judgment in which I relate with you with this open space of allowing you to be free to just be yourself without judgment and evaluation and comparison. And so, so we can share that uh, when we can experience that um, so I think the course calls it, you know, um, it's basically forgiveness, um, because we have forgiven, we have received forgiveness. We have accepted <laughs> that we are forgiven. So therefore we are holy and therefore we can just offer that recognition to everyone. Yeah, and because it's part of the holy instant, right? It's the recognition that we are whole and complete and holy, uh, one holy mind, which is the Christ mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, number nine. Let's see. God offers thanks to the holy host who would receive him and lets, lets him enter and abide where he would be. And by your welcome, does he welcome you into himself? For what is contained in you who welcome him is returned to him. And we but celebrate his wholeness as we welcome him into ourselves. Those who receive the Father are one with him, being host to him who created them. And by allowing him to enter, the remembrance of the Father enters with him, and with him they remember the only relationship they ever had and ever want to have. Yes, yeah, so the Holy Host is our mind um, who is open to receiving God, um, which is love, which is eternal love, unconditional eternal love, and lets him enter and abide where he would be within us. Um, and so by this welcome, by opening our mind to unconditional love, God, um, then God wel welcomes us into himself because it's a, um, it's a recognition of the oneness of creator and created. Um, yeah, for what is contained in you who welcome him is returned to him. So that's the that's the oneness, the one will. Our will, the will of God is the same. It's, you know, um, there's no separation. Yeah, so those who receive the Father are one with him being host to him who created them. So that's, the, I mean, that's the ultimate, um, the ultimate awareness because it's the, the, um, the end of the separation. I, that's probably the return to knowledge here. This paragraph is talking about the return to knowledge. Then it would be the end of perception. Um, because remember that perception was the first, consciousness was the first split and it made the mind a perceiver rather than a knower. 
So then the process is reversed um, and knowledge is restored. Okay, number 10. Um, Connie? <clears throat> this is the time in which a new year will soon be born from the time of Christ. I have perfect faith in you to do all that you would accomplish. Nothing will be lacking and you will make complete and not destroy. Say then to your brother, I give you to the Holy Spirit as part of myself. I know that you will be released unless I want to use you to imprison myself. In the name of my freedom, I choose your release because I recognize that we will be released together. So will the year begin in joy and freedom. There is much to do and we have been long delayed. Accept the holy instant as this year is born and take your place so long left unfulfilled in the great awakening. Make this year different by making it all the same. And let all your relationships be made holy for you. This is our will. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the time of Christ. Um, is the recognition that we are one, we are one self. And so in this, it, it's like a prayer here. Um, yes, there's, there's, you know, line seven, uh, because I recognize that we will be released together. It reminds me of the, the lesson on grace, by grace I live by grace I am released um, because of the word release there um, so I give I give you to the Holy Spirit as part of myself I know that you will be released yeah so um, So we, we are released from bondage to the thought system of the ego of separation, which is a perception of ourselves as a body identity. So that's the release because that's imprisonment in littleness, in suffering, um, in pain, in the belief in death and, you know, sacrifice and um, scarcity and all of that. Um, and so we want to release, uh, and then, you know, in that lesson on, on, on grace, it also says, uh, let's see, help me say something about, uh, so that I may release also. So that's what this is saying too. I know that you will be released, um, unless I want to use you to imprison myself. Um, so to be released from the um, identification with the body is to be able to offer that same, um, that same awareness or that same, um, the healing. It's a healed mind that can offer release because the healed mind has been released from the um, perception of being a separate body and, and perceiving others as separate. Um, and, and that's what bondage is. It's imprisonment um, of myself in littleness, you know, in suffering, in lack, in deprivation, in, um, yeah, in fear. So it's a release from fear uh, because fear is not real. It does not exist. Um, 
that's the, the summary at the beginning of A Course in Miracles. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Um, you know, the opposite of love is fear, but what is, um, but, but, but what is reality as love can have no opposite. So fear does not exist. It cannot be a threat to the mind that has recognized the truth of what it is as eternal love, as one with its creator. Um, yeah, and that's what uh, joy and freedom, joy and freedom from bondage is. Uh, so that's part of the great awakening. That's taking our place so long left unfulfilled in the great awakening, the holy instant. Um, <laughs> line 11, make this year different by making it all the same. <laughs> so um, to, to not perceive differences okay would be a change so we're making this year different by no longer perceiving differences and not perceiving bodies but perceiving ourselves all as one mind and all the same and in and in that awareness that recognition our relationships will be made holy for us be because we're not subscribing to the belief in separation, the belief in inequality, the belief in, um, let's see, in attack, basically. Once you have, once you have inequality, then there's a belief in attack. So, um, okay. And, and, you know, the mind, the mind cannot attack. So the belief that we can attack means that we have identified ourselves with a body. Um, the let's see. It, it's interesting, but you know the ego. The ego thought system is a system of of uh, ideas around separation but those ideas in themselves are not separate it's a system um so it's one ego thought system so it's also one false uh, thinking mind that's not a real mind that's not our the true mind that's not the one mind it's a, it's really a contradiction <laughs> you know because it's, it's it's a belief in separation, but it's a system of ideas, of beliefs. And then they're not actually separate pieces because they're not physical things. They're still ideas. So they're all interconnected. So there's really no separation there either. Um, it's, it's, it's only, you know, when we look through the body's eyes that we perceive separation and then believe in the ego thought system. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, so anything, um, Connie, that pretty much takes care of the section. Yeah, no, that was good. Um, ah, chapter 16, 15, we're complete. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so then we will continue with chapter 16, the forgiveness of illusions. Oh, great. great. Okay. <laughs> Can we get going quick on that? <laughs> well, yes. I mean, uh, I mean, yeah. So the, <laughs> so the holy instant really teaches us, okay, mm. that the, tr the truth of reality is wholeness. It's not separation, even though that's what we perceive. You see, so then when we're forgiving separation, we're really forgiving illusion because we're forgiving unreality. 
Yeah, because reality doesn't need forgiveness. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's yeah. it's whole and perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay yeah okay all right That's thank good. you so <laughs> we'll see you next time okay